Hi there, and thanks for joining us on Shaping Tomorrow. I'm your host, Art Morris. In this podcast from TII, the Technology Innovation Institute in Abu Dhabi, we chat with the world's leading scientists, technologists, and researchers to get to grips with what's happening in the ever-changing world of science and technology and how it affects us in our everyday lives today and tomorrow. In this episode, we're going to direct our energies, directly that, into directed energy. From the days of the ancient Greeks and Archimedes mirrors to today's laser eye surgery, directed energy has shaped the world around us and how we interact with it. Though sometimes we wouldn't always know how or why. So let's try to make sense of this age-old phenomena through the lens of today's cutting-edge science and technology. To answer these questions and more, I'm joined by Dr. Shauki Kashmi, the Chief Researcher at the Directed Energy Research Center at TII. Dr. Shauki, welcome. We're glad to have you here on Shaping Tomorrow. Thank you so much, Acht, and it's my pleasure to be here with you today. So let's jump right into this by starting with what's your definition of directed energy? I kind of played around with it a little bit in the beginning, so let's get serious and, and why don't you give us a better definition? Well, uh, I, 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 would, I would uh, uh, remember, just recall that a lot of Hollywood movies have been advertising directed energy technologies. Many things are just concepts, but reality is that directed energy systems are everywhere in our uh, day lives. From surgery, as you mentioned, to uh, industrial uh, manufacturing, directed energy um, refers to the possibility to focus a high amount of energy in a very specific volume that we control as well at a given distance. And for that, we are able to leverage physical phenomena in order to perform specific actions. Okay, so what kind of energy are we talking about? Light, uh, heat, what, you know, I was playing with uh, Archimedes mirrors. So what kind of, what kind of energy really is, is what's at the cutting edge today? So in, ge in general, and also the way at TII we are tackling or developing new technologies, we are looking at leveraging acoustic waves, light waves, and electromagnetic waves um, across the spectrum mm -hmm. in order to create powerful systems for healthcare applications, industrial applications, and uh, for specific um, operations that would require high energy to perform surgery of tissues and things like that. Okay. So let's start with what a typical day in the life of somebody that's working in the Directed Energy Research Center looks like. So I will I will try to avoid my 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 case because in general you you typical know, <laughs> when 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 uh, we, so we we are a research group of um, around ninety people today and in general we have uh, people highly motivated in developing cutting edge technologies mm -hmm. so talking about what we should what should be our days and what is really our uh, working day in general in, I would say that true the truth is that we don't have. Uh, limits in the in term of working hours because we really like what we do but from the morning uh spending time uh brainstorming in the in the meeting rooms with the guys looking after specific prototypes that we are developing working in the workshops in the labs experimenting our systems and to finally uh, publish uh, scientific papers in top academic journals or sometimes uh, submitting uh, patents f with our uh, with the research outcome. Wow, that's th that, that's a pretty full day. So, <laughs> um, let's let's break it down a little bit more. Um, when you talk about working on the prototypes, let's kind of start there because I think that's something our audience might really be interested. What do you have in your bag of tricks that you're de developing prototypes for? So, in in general, we have a strong uh, relationship uh, with the industry through uh, uh, Aspire, and we try to tackle. Uh, challenges that may um, that uh, that that comes from the industry or from different type of customers. Mm -hmm. So based on that, we are looking at uh, brainstorming sessions, and we are uh, creating a high-level structure of our projects. And in order to really check the feasibility of our our technologies, we are creating elementary prototypes that we are testing uh, in our laboratories. Mm -hmm. And based on that, together with Aspire, we try to bring that proposal to the customer and to have the buy-in. Okay. And finally, as uh, any other uh, applied R&D institutions, 
we try to bring those prototypes outside, so in outdoor environment, to showcase that we have been able from the start mm -hmm. till the end of the development to capture the requirements of the customers. Oh, okay. So um, if, if I was a, a young student and I wanted to come and work in Dr. Schauke's lab because working with directed energy sounds just about as cool as it can possibly get, what kind of training would you suggest I have? What are the sorts of things I should be interested in? You know, how would you, how would you guide somebody that's listening that says, okay, I'm all in. What do I have to do? So in, in general, we, we, if, if I look at the, at, the, at the team members today, mm -hmm. we come from very different backgrounds. We have physicists, we have uh, engineers, so electrical, mechanical, chemical, and uh, uh, pulse power engineers. And all together, we are bringing our skills and knowledge to develop cutting edge technologies, mm -hmm. which means that whoever wants to bring his skills to support our vision um, are welcome to apply and we will be happy to support them in developing the missing skills because as everywhere in the world we cannot learn everything but we should have the right mindset and being open to learn more and so so curiosity is a big thing for yeah. your group yeah if 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 you are not if you are not uh, into star wars it might be very difficult to work with us <laughs> <laughs> so you're telling me you do have that lightsaber project somewhere in the back room <laughs> no but at least i can tell you that we all dream about it <laughs> ah there you go there you go so uh, another part to to what you do is is making sure that electronics are protected against environmental influences that might damage them, electromagnetic capability and protection and that sort of thing. Can you talk a little bit more about that too? Because that has big implications from everything, from your phone to, you, you know, you don't want your car to stop when, uh, you, you know, the lightning strikes and that sort of thing. So just walk us through a little bit of that too. Yeah, you, 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 you are completely right. Uh, one of the key uh, achievements of, uh, of, uh, of our research center and, and TII this year is the opening of electromagnetic compatibility labs, where the goal is to recreate in a controlled environment uh, natural and man-made hazards uh, coming from emitters or, uh, uh, as I said, natural, uh, natural hazard like, like lightning. So we recreate those electromagnetic environments and we try to I mean, we try. We are testing electronic systems that could be, that can be one day found out there to make sure that they will be able to operate in the uh, real environment. Mm -hmm. so, so, give us a little a sense of what it would, what your center, not your center, I'm sorry, what, what your laboratory that tests the e EMC, what that really looks like, because I've seen it. It's it's really cool, and I, I think your uh, our listeners would be fascinated with that. You, you do lightning indoors. Yes. Yes. That, 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 that's uh, one of the applications we have in our laboratory. For people who, who have no idea about EMC, uh, I would say that we have a big microwave oven okay. where the goal is not to cook food, <laughs> but the, the goal is to send electromagnetic waves the same way it's done in the microwave oven, mm -hmm. but to make sure that any functionality of the system we are testing will sustain specific limits defined by standards. And, and do you define the standards or are these international standards? What, what, what do they mean? They, they are all international standards mm -hmm. because, the, because this is something that is known worldwide and we need to comply with those regulations. Uh, and in the same time, uh, we are looking at supporting the development of innovative products uh, here in, uh, in UAE. Mm -hmm. And for that, the laboratories were highly required in order to perform the pre-qualification and the certification stages that would switch a system from a, a, a ready product to a commercializ commercializable product. Right. And this is where uh, TII come in uh, into the picture. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you've got the only one certainly in the UAE that does this. Uh, and, and probably for the, re for the region, you're, you essentially got a world-class facility there, So right? at, at our scale, yes, we are the only one in the region. We also have added one of one interesting features where we combine pulse power laboratories and electromagnetic laboratories mm -hmm. to be able to test um, systems that will 
would release in uh, nanosecond pulses mm -hmm. a high amount of energy because this is what is happening. So, so that's pulse power, right? Exactly. As opposed to... To electromagnetics. Right, which is continuous. Yes, exactly. Yeah, so that's more like a radio signal. Exactly, like exactly. Okay. All right, very cool. But you got to tell them how big it is, Shouty. You said, it, you said it's like a microwave. What's the biggest thing you can put in your microwave? Oven? So the biggest <laughs> would be a, a vehicle. Don't be bashful. <laughs> <laughs> no. The, <laughs> so in general, the, the, the maximum uh, size of, uh, of systems we can test today are... Uh, a uh, vehicle uh, with uh, five, of five meter height, uh, 100 tons uh, weight. So we have been building something really big. We talk about uh, 20 meter uh, by uh, 17 meters with uh, 10 meter high. So you can, you can uh, imagine that the, the laboratory is pretty big. So that is a great big microwave. Of ab 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 <laughs> absolutely. 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 <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Um, so some of the other things that, that you, let's, let's talk a little bit about some of the other things that you would like people to know about if, if, you know, because a lot of what we've talked about now are things that, you know, that people can visualize, but I know you're doing some other things that, that probably people wouldn't necessarily think about being done in a, in a, uh, in, in a laboratory like what we're talking about here. So what are some of the other stuff? So in, in, in general, what we, what we have done. Um, when we built the direct energy research system with, with our colleagues was to really think about what would be within the next 10 years the necessary capabilities and technologies that would really uh, support the, 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 the spirit of TII, which is innovating for a better world. Mm -hmm. So one of the examples we have is recently uh, the presentation of a ground penetrating radar that people call uh, the X-ray for the ground. Yeah. Uh, uh, reality is that we try to look into the ground to see if uh, dangerous materials or, uh, or uh, 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 technologies that could hurt people uh, will still be there in the ground. And we try to bring that technology out there to support, to support uh, uh, the vision of saving people's life and supporting the, uh, the benefit, ad so developing technologies for the benefit of the society. Yeah, it, it, leftover landmines are a huge issue all around the world. And it seems to me I saw a recent uh, YouTube video that, uh, that featured your technology out there being demonstrated. That, that, give us a little bit more detail on that, because I think, you know, something that cleans up that sort of leftover war material is, is I think, you know, one of the coolest things that you can do. So. Yeah, it's a... It's, uh... So the, the context around that video is very interesting. The goal was to, uh, to showcase uh, technologies uh, that would have a significant uh, impact uh, for, uh, for uh, the society and people. And, and we had a very good time explaining that technology with, uh, with our uh, visitor. Mm -hmm. And we are now moving that technology forward because we got some interesting requests from different countries uh, showing that there is a real need and uh, people want to uh, to test our solution in their in their country. So we we are keen to engage with those uh, people, and we will try to support that particular engagement. So so you know I think that's absolutely fascinating because what you're describing is the path from absolutely a laboratory experience or experiment or experience all the way out to something that's a product that people are now looking at. And then the next step is to commercialize it. And so, you know, in, in, in 50 years, this is where the countries come. But you did this in 18 months? Yeah, so, yeah. Appro appro approximately, about, yes. About 18 uh, months. And, and, and so in the next 50 years, who knows what you're going to be doing. Can you, you talk about some of the businesses that you'd like to see grow out of what you're doing here in the next 50? So re reality is that we have people dreaming about uh, big things. And uh, we have the support of very smart people and uh, well-experienced uh, 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 program managers who really have a vision about how we should handle a project in an efficient way. And this is something that is pretty unique for, uh, for us. Sky is the limit. <laughs> we know this sentence. Yes, absolutely. And actually, this is in our DNA. Mm -hmm. We are looking at things uh, that people may have overlooked or may not have had the time or the funds to uh, work on. Mm -hmm. And we at TII, we have this opportunity and we will make sure that we will not waste the support of our management 
and our time developing things that wouldn't make sense within the next 10 years. And this is uh, coming again with the, with the interesting link between TII, ATRC, Aspire, the industry, the academia, universities, and developing the local talent in order to feed our needs uh, for our internal and uh, internal engagement. Well, and, and just the fact that you're, you're working in an environment where you're allowed to be that agile, right? That you can actually take something from the laboratory and get it out into the field right? And it's probably not ready quite for prime time yet because it hasn't been idiot proofed, but it, it's ready to demonstrate. And, it, and you've got countries that are interested in it in 18 months. Yeah. That, that's, so talk a little bit about why agility is so important to what you do. So uh, um, we, we have to think about the way people have been doing R&D for years uh, and how top innovative countries in the world are, are looking at uh, developing uh, technologies. The main idea is when we have the right people, the right process, when we remove all the bureaucracy from our uh, uh, engagement, having people thinking out of the box is something that we can afford because we have the time for it. Yeah. If we don't have them looking into writing 30 pages of reports, but having a one or two hour brainstorming session uh, with a very good cup of coffee, of course, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> the outcome of that is way more beneficial for us. And this is the environment where we are. The communication uh, toward the potential uh, customers or clients or partners, I, I, I prefer the word partners, um, is straightforward because we have the right people doing this part for us. We have people who are able to consolidate requirements. We have people able to share with us the needs and they are our partners in the way we are working. It's completely changed the way we, we need uh, we, we, we need to um, innovate, and it has an impact on our possi uh, the possibility for us mm -hmm. to be agile in every single step in our uh, uh, R&D activities. So agile, creative, and having a good time, it really sounds like, with a good cup of coffee. Sounds like Dr. Schauke's lab is, is the place to be here in Abu Dhabi. If you have one one other thing that you wanted to leave our listeners with a question, comment, something that I haven't talked about, that I haven't asked you to talk about, um, what would it be? Art, um, I would say just one thing. Uh, if people are looking or are having a um, moonshot project, but they still have the feet on the ground, mm -hmm. they are welcome to join us and to innovate with us. Wow. That's great. Fascinating. This has been a great conversation. I really enjoyed this. Thank you for dropping by. I really enjoyed our conversation. And for those of you out there, if you have any questions for anyone at the TII team that you'd like to get some answers to in future episodes, get in touch with us on our social media channels. We'll read your uh, questions and we'll answer them. For now, see you next time.